There are moments in life so inexplicable. So tragic. They just knew he was not going to make it. So full of pain and fear. that only unwavering faith can turn things around. These moments are life's greatest gifts. They come to us when we need them the most and when we expect them the least. They are moments of divine intervention. so terrified of losing him. The thought of never holding him again was more than I could bear. I was really mad at God. Why would he cause harm on a three-year-old little boy? Prayer was really what was the only thing I felt we could do at that point. He's alive. Aren't you lucky you get to meet an angel today? It's fantastic. <laughs> Very exciting. You know, I was just talking to Roma before we started. I'm a Catholic schoolgirl, 12 years at Marymount, and you're an Irish Catholic right from the real place. I am. I was taught by the Sisters of Mercy, or as we used to call them, the Sisters of No Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. And so that must be, have a lot to do with the fact that you do these uplifting spiritual shows over and over again, how much you've brought to the public with this. It's, uh, it has to be some influence on you, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm very interested in the theme of hope and how that can show up in my work. Um, for almost 10 years, I had the privilege of playing an angel on a TV show called Touched by an Angel. It's so great. Thank you. And, um, and it took a very simple premise, and that is that there is a God and that he loves you and he wants to be part of your life. And it was a profoundly moving experience to be on that show. Right. And, um, uh, you know, and what a gift I think the show was. To and I, I love something I read about a thing you said, which is biblical characters are flawed because everything has a crack that's how the light gets in. Wow. I really love that. It meant so much to me to read that because we can, it, it gives us more compassion about the people that we feel are maybe flawed in a way that's harmful yeah, or hurtful. Yeah, I mean, I think um, we, we had an opportunity um, a number of years ago, Sons of the City here behind <laughs> us, um, to start a, a production company with the intention really of bringing these projects that would have this sort of hopeful element to it. And I joined forces with my mighty husband, Mark Burnett, and, uh, and we started a production company that we called Lightworkers Media. Uh, okay. And our intention was that rather than, than curse the darkness, it's better to light a candle, you know, to That's light the, the, the light of hope. And, um, and our first um, project together was a series called The Bible. And, and you played Mother Mary. I did. I played Mary, the mother of Jesus. I, I was going to say, my Lord, what Catholic girl doesn't dream about doing that? Yeah, it was really, it was an, an amazing, but an amazing series just to produce. We filmed the show entirely in location in Morocco. Um, we only had 10 hours to bring the whole Bible to television. And many of our friends at that time thought we'd lost our minds. They said, sure, nobody's going to want to see the Bible on television. <laughs> And of How course, wrong they were. A hundred million people right. showed up to see it. So it's it was really extraordinary. So so tell us about answered prayers. Where did you get the idea for that? Well, the idea was born really just out of watching the news and being so upset by the endless bad news that 
you know, that was coming out of our own country and out of uh, global news. And I said to Mark, you know, I just wish we had a channel where we could turn on and see some good news because I just get so disheartened. Right. And, um, and so the idea for this show was born, that we would find people who had been in situations that were life-threatening in some way and that w the commonality that they shared is that there's a moment they reach out in, in prayer and they ask for help. And then um, help comes in ways that, you know, logic can't explain. How, and how, how did, how but how did you find up. them and how can you be sure they're not making it up? Well, we went out through c churches and communities all across America and uh, we put uh, appeals up on social media. And in fact, we were inundated with the most incredible stories. Um, and you picked six? Well, we picked, um, we, we have six episodes, but we have two or three stories oh, per uh -huh. episode. Right. So we probably ended up picking about 20 of these stories. But every one of them would just break your heart in seeing them. The and trailer then, makes you cry. And then lift your heart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see that little boy, his, his own father, backed up in the lawnmower, and, um, and it was a terrible accident. He ran over the wee boy and very badly damaged his leg. And so, you know, as well as the injury for the child, the father was carrying a lot of pain and grief and guilt and shame that, he had, that this had happened to the child. And they managed to save the wee boy's leg, but, but it was, he was very badly injured and never fully recovered in being able to, um, you know, perform activities like right. everybody else. And right. so the doctor strongly suggested that this child have a prosthetic, that his leg be amputated. And the family didn't know what the right thing to do was. And so they literally got on their knees and they prayed and they asked for a sign. And the next day they were driving to the doctors for a consultation. And they stopped at a traffic light, and out the window they saw a man on a bicycle. And the wee boy says, look, and they all looked, and the man on the bicycle had a prosthetic leg. Wow. And so they waved to the man and asked him to stop, and they told him that they had just prayed for a sign, and, and here he was. Wow. And he shared with them that he had only had um, his prosthetic limb for about a year, and that it had made such an incredible difference oh in his my. life and he strongly urged them and encouraged them that they should do this uh -huh. that the child's life would be absolutely changed because of it and they did and it was and so the show uh in the show you show these people telling their stories yeah we and then do. Do you have a reenactment as well we do marla that's how the show works we, we we have interviewed all of these people and they trusted us with their stories and um and they're they're their witness to what happened to them is incredibly moving. And then we cut to reenactments of their story. And in many cases, we cut to real life footage because everybody now has an iPhone yes, and, right. and able to, to film certain situations. There's one story where a tornado comes wh whisking into a community and lifts this home up and flings it several hundred feet down the street, and we have footage of that real storm and so on. But it comes together. It's very, it's dramatic, it's emotional, it's compelling. It's up, uh, ultimately very uplifting. Right. And it premieres this Sunday night mm -hmm. on TLC. And it's very much about hope. It brings you back to the fact that there is hope. I think the worst thing that we all feel is despair or hopelessness. And how good to see something and say, well, if they got through it, maybe I can. I think absolutely that's the essence of the show and the intention of the show. And, you know, it is my hope that, that uh, you know, Sunday, that for the next six Sundays, that families will be able to curl up together on the couch. They know they can watch this and trust it for content. They don't have to keep their finger poised on the remote <laughs> control to censor it if you're watching it with kids. And, um, and you know, th and the takeaway is just that, you know, that, that, something extraordinary, that there's power in prayer. Mm -hmm. And when you reach out, there's one story in here of a, of a car that goes off the road and it ends up upside down in a river. And the water is rushing into the cabin of this car and the father is there with these three children hanging it upside down in the dark, disoriented at the bottom of this river and he can't get his seatbelt undone. And he, you know, he prays that somehow he can get out of there. And finally on his last breath, 
he manages to escape. He breaks the surface with just enough time to call for help quickly before he goes back down to try and help his children. And on that lonely road, three cars in that moment see him and stop. In one of the cars, there's a diver. In the oh second God. car, there's a medic <laughs> whose expertise is CPR. And in the third car, there's a, just a, a big, strong fella. And they were all able to get these kids. They, anyway, they saved this family. Wow. But it was like the angel army showed That's up. That's right. You know, you couldn't have ordered. Not just uh, one, three. Yeah, it's amazing. So it's stories like that. And, um, and it's called Answered Prayers. And, and they are. Yeah. Answered, and all of those people must have said a prayer right at that moment. And yeah, they did. That's the thread that links them all together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's been fun for me. I've been here in New York just for a few days to, um, you know, well, to, to so let people know about it. And I'm back in New so York. Much. You know, this is where I first That's right. moved when I, I emigrated from Ireland. I come from Northern Ireland. I don't know if you, any of you've ever been there. I come from the city of Derry. And I grew up uh, during the war there. It was a, a very troubled time in my nation's history. Thankfully, uh, there's been an answer to prayer in Northern Ireland, and we have a peace process that is held. And the community that I grew up in was, was divided, segregated all through my childhood. Um, and a river ran down the middle of it, literally. Right. And uh, communities were, were, were living separate from each other. And now there's a peace bridge built across that river. Isn't that great? Aptly called That's the peace great. bridge. And, and so I'm interested in the places that we can be brought together. But when I first moved to America, I moved here to New York City, and I was a coat check girl on an Upper West Side restaurant. This is years ago. And, um, and I remember the very first celebrity that I ever met was Regis Philbin. And, uh, you know, tell them how much he gave you as yeah, a tip. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe I got a quarter, a coat, or a dollar a coat. You know, that would have been the average. And Regis gave me $20. Doesn't and that I, make you like him I a whole lot I better? I died and went to heaven. And then, about, I don't know, five, six, six years later, I was starring on Touch by an Angel, which really is such an American story, isn't it? That you could be checking coats <laughs> one day. And, you know, just a few years later, you're starring on your own TV show. But I was invited back to be a guest star on the Regis Philbin <laughs> show. And I told him, and he said, oh, hey, this could be very bad news. He says, because you're only telling this story because I either stiffed you <laughs> or I was generous. And I said, well, no, you were very, very generous. So <laughs> that's a great That's yeah. a great story. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm also impressed that you're redoing Ben-Hur. Yes, we I are. Can't, what, what courage you and your husband have. Uh, it's bold, but it's going to be amazing. It, Redefining the word epic. And it's a motion picture, not a television. It's a motion picture with MGM and wow. Paramount. And it stars Jack Houston stepping into the role of Judah Ben-Hur. Morgan Freeman is also Great. in the movie. Toby are you playing Cabell. one of the saints or the I'm not. The I am not queens. in it. I'm part of the producing team and had an amazing experience. We shot entirely on location in Italy, in the town of Matera, which if Italy is a boot, Matera is the ankle. Mm -hmm. And then we, we um, worked at the studios in Rome, and we completely recreated Circus Maximus. Wow. And, um, that must you know, cost a fortune. It was, it's a big, big uh, studio movie, a uh, big budget movie. It was going to be released February 26th, and it's really, really exciting. How exciting. It, really exciting. My so goodness. It's been great. It's been a great um, few years, you know, of uh, getting to do what we love to do getting to work together with my own husband, you know, <laughs> which, uh, you know, the real miracle, I always say sometimes, is that we're still speaking to each other that's as a sure. husband and wife team. Oh, that's great. And so, Ben, her now this show, are, have you already completed the whole six shows? Yes, uh -huh. the, the six shows for Answered Prayers are all uh, ready to roll out. And, um, what brought you to TLC? Um, the, you know, it just seems like it was the perfect partnership for uh -huh. us. It's a... Um, you know, the, it's, it's a show with a lot of love and a lot of heart, and I think that their, their demographic is perfect for the nature of the show. They've been great partners to work with. Nancy Daniels and her teams over there have been marvelous, and, um, and we're really, you know, we have great hopes for this little show that it's, uh, it's going to touch people. Oh, I think it and, will. And, uh, you know, you mentioned one of my favorite quotes earlier, which is actually attributed to Leonard Cohen, 
which is ring out the bells, he right. says, that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. Oh, I love that. And I do. I love that. I love the idea that it's in the places that, you know, that we're broken sometimes is where we can reach yeah, but up. And, you know, parents really want some place to enjoy with their children. It's something really missing. We're all looking at our screens, our little game screens and our, our, our mobile phones and all, even though uh, we at AOL have, are now partnered with Verizon, so we do love our mobile phones. <laughs> uh, but, but to get the children and the adults off the phones and just be able to talk at dinner... Uh, and to have something to do together. I remember when we were growing up, we watched Ed Sullivan every Sunday night. That was a family thing. And now you've given them something not only to watch together, but that will be uplifting and inspire them and give them a, a catalyst for a conversation. I think so. I think that's one of the cool things about this, you know, is that it's a it's an entryway into maybe a bigger conversation mm -hmm. in their lives about the, you know, about God and about faith. And about, you know, the power of prayer. I grew up in a house where, you know, where we would have had a habit of praying. It yes. It was, was part of our everydayness. As if you went to Catholic school, oh, I know you were praying Mary your Mount. way through Catholic Absolutely. school. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, there isn't a day of my life that I don't start my day in gratitude for, for my health and the health of my family and for all the blessings that we have in our lives. You know, you're an angel, not only on television, but uh, you really are. An angel, no, no. and I, I'm, I'm very interested in the Smile Project. Yes, uh, that helps children who have well, cleft palates. Well, the, the, the volunteers at Operation Smile really are the angels, the true angels. And I've had the the good fortune to be uh, an ambassador, Smile ambassador for this group for many, many years, for about 25 years now. And I've traveled internationally with them to South and Central America, to Africa, and to uh, the Middle East. And you and find the children who have cleft palates and... Correct. Uh -huh. uh, clef, mostly with cleft palates and cleft lips. And these children's lives have been, you know, just just so miserable. They often, they, they look hideous, and so there's a lot of uh, shame and uh, humiliation. And bullying, I'm sure. And they can't really eat properly, so there's a lot of malnourishment. And then if they are old enough that they've learned to speak, they, in the absence of a palate, they sort of speak like that. And so then there's an assumption made from their community that they that there's you know that there's some sort of uh, thing wrong with their brain. Yes, yeah, something mm -hmm. wrong with their brain. And so this group uh, volunteers their time and their efforts and mobilize and go to third world and developing countries and they perform a surgery which costs only about two hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. And and it takes about 45 minutes, something like that. I mean, you, you consider what you might spend $250 on in the next couple of months. And a child's life could be changed forever. And, um, and so I got involved with them because I was so touched by this work. And we all take our smiles <laughs> so much for granted, you know. And... Um, and just the importance of making a difference in somebody else's life, you know. It's and you know I originally started because I thought that it was the right thing to do, and that you know you go because you want to give back. And the truth is that every time I'm I do engage with them, I'm reminded that it is in giving that we receive, and that really the gift is mine each time I go and help out. And when you travel around the country, you're looking for the children, but are you also raising money? Oh yes. Yeah, no, we're raising money. Yeah. We're raising money. Right. Uh, we need the money. There's people to do. I mean, we, this, the doctors and the nurses give of their time mm -hmm. freely, but the, but the flights and the equipment right. and the medicine, it all costs money. Are you bringing them with you, the doctors and the surgeons? Yes, they're oh. all. We bring them in from, uh, from the States and also from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then they try to teach local doctors also mm -hmm. the, the surgery um, you know, with the philosophy that if you, if you teach a man to fish, that he'll eat forever. You right. Know? So, um, but it's really it's great work that Operation Smile does, and in, I in America too. Uh, it's less so here, and we have a system here that if a child is born in this nation with a cleft lip or cleft palate, um, that that At our birthday. system takes care of that. In these other countries. There's children who have no chance, you know, unless something like Operation Smile comes into their community. Mm -hmm. 
they they have no chance. So um, it's really it's at operationsmile.org uh, would get you there if you if you want to have more information and you know anything at all that you could um, contribute. I know would make a difference in the life of a child somewhere. And not just the child, you know, the whole family. There's a healing that happens oh, for course, the whole family. Yeah. You know, no, it's a, uh, I know what working with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, when a child is sick, it's an earthquake in the whole family. Yes. It really does yeah. upset all of it. No, and, uh, and to yeah. cure a child. No, I know to, you do absolutely a a amazing work. And I've, I've ad Thank admired you. the work Thank that you. you've done, Marlo, for Thank years you. and years. But to make a child better heals the family and to... And to save this child from this shame and this inability to eat and all of the things that uh, that child must go through does absolutely heal yeah, the family. Yeah, well, you know, I remember years ago when I was a little girl hearing a story about the starfish. And all these starfish were washed up on the shore. And there's a little girl peeling them back, trying to save one by one and flinging it into the ocean. And the guy comes by and he says, all oh, these starfish. <laughs> They have no chance. You know, you're not making any difference here. And she says, yeah. And she peels one off and she throws it into the sea. And she says, well, I made a difference to that one. Uh, and I always feel that about yeah. the need in the world. That's There's right. so much need right, in the right, world. Right. I mean, what you're doing at St. Jude's and what we're doing in Operation Smile and all the other, there's a lot of good people doing good things right. and we need to make more noise for the good guys right. and all the good work that's happening. And remember that when you feel paralyzed, oh, there's so much going on, what difference can I make? You know, if it's one child or one smile, um, it's certainly worth it. One child at a time, one smile yes. at a time, yes. one family at a time. Well, you're just so fantastic, and I know that these people all want to ask you many questions. Um, yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you're, you're the questioner. That's great. Hi, Ms. Downey. This is such a bucket list moment to uh, meet you. Um, you've had such an impact on my life through your characters, Monica and Touched by an Angel, and it was always my soul's dessert on Sunday evenings to watch that show with my family, and so it's so nice to have another show to watch starting now. Um, my question is, as a young Jewish adult, um, I've been, you know, struggling with faith and spirituality and really figuring out who I am and, you know, having that connection that you do. Um, do you have any suggestions on how my generation really can do that? We're all so digital. We're all on the dating sites. We're all glued to our phones. And even my temple recently, after many years, shut its doors. And, you know, it's like there's, I'm the wandering Jew. <laughs> um, and, you know, just wondering what you have, response you may have. Well, I think that you're, th thank you, um, thank you for your question. And I think that to your point of the overstimulation of the world that we live in, you know, I think we're bombarded with, with uh, noise, aren't we? It's like with our, and we're all s filled with distraction. And the only thing I would encourage you, if you're really interested in a, in a relationship with, with the um, Almighty is to take some quiet time. You know, I think we have to s be still and listen. And, um, and that sometimes means just stepping away from the noise and putting down the, the, um, the computers and the phones. And, and, and I find, you know, wh while I've had many wonderful experiences in church, I find that nature can really... Um, be, you know, the, the, the bass, a walk by the ocean or climbing a mountain or, you know, elevating. Uh, I think be still. I, I think that we have each within us, we all have the capacity to listen to that s small voice within, you know, that voice that tells you, we, the voice that tells you to, what to do. You know, when you ask, there's a knowing. I, I believe that's the God voice in each of us. And you see it illustrated in this show, Answered Prayers, because there's people who suddenly show up to rescue. And the, like the, those men in the car, the diver and the CPR medic, the guy said, I don't know why I was driving down that road. I never go down that road. Mm. Like I usually go the other way. But something told me that day to go down that road. And so I would, you know, to me, I'd say, well, what is that something? And that's something, and I can look back on my own life at the moments maybe when something told me not to do something, and I did it. And it, it you know, inevitably, 
the results were disastrous. And I can look back and say, I kind of always knew I probably shouldn't have done that. And so just to learn to listen, to like check in with that, with that voice. But my experience is that you have to be quiet to do so. Hello. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, so my question is, uh, uh, as a uh, host, uh, how have these uh, inexplicable moments uh, changed you as a person? Um, uh, so, so how has this, sh this show changed no. me? Um, as, a, as a host. Um, the, I, I feel that um, seeing these stories um, uh, back to back is a great reminder of um, the power of prayer. And recently, in my own family this year, we had a, a, a family illness. And, and if it hadn't been for prayer and the prayer of our community, I don't know that we would have had the outcome we have. So just a great uh, um, deepening. It's been a deepening and, uh, and just a reminder to be grateful. Uh, thank you uh, for all your work with those kids around the world and everything like that. That was a, a charity that I worked on in, in college, and uh, we were happy to be involved with that. Um, on your various projects, working on uh, something like a small TV show with reenactments of true stories versus a huge project like Ben-Hur, can you talk about any similarities you found in the challenges or how those processes were different for you, or did you approach them differently? No, it's a, a great question because here on Answered Prayers, we were working with a, a scaled-down uh, budget. And Ben-Hur, of course, is a very, very big budget studio movie. But I tell you, I think how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you show up with a, an in, a intention, and the intention for me is to bring, you know, to, be, to bring good quality, excellent quality to the screen, to tell stories that are uh, relevant, to uh, make emotional connections, right? So all of, if it can't emotionally engage you, you know, um, it's not going to hold your interest. And that somehow through the experience of watching that you will be changed, you know, that however you have sat down to watch this, um, the, the uh, essence of these shows, I think, is, is um, you know, it not dissimilar in the in the need for ho for hope that um, Ben Hur is a huge, big, w amazing action movie, and it will deliver on all those fronts. It has extras, horses, chariots, battles. Um, it's big in scale. It's beautiful. It's beautifully acted, and yet it's also a story of of forgiveness. It's a deeply emotional story. But I think really it's just about, you know, absolutely bringing your best. It's not enough to just have a good intention. I certainly know in, um, in uh, the genre that I've been working in, in faith and film and family, that I think oftentimes for movies about faith, that people think it's enough that, they're, that they have the good intention to do it. And the movie isn't uh, of excellent quality. And, you know, people... We, you know, we're, audiences are too sophisticated, I think. You have to bring your A-game to everything that you do. Time for one more question. Hi. Until this day, what has been the most shocking miracle that you've seen or heard about or experienced? Shocking miracle. <laughs> <laughs> the word shocking is sort of <laughs> shocking, isn't it? Um, Maybe stunning, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, in one of our uh, stories uh, that's, that will be uh, coming up, uh, it's actually um, was a love story. And, um, and uh, a woman had prayed that she would meet her soulmate, that she would meet her, her, her husband. And she was working as a cashier, and she wrote her name on uh, a bill, and she put it out into circulation. And a number of years later, a man is on his way to ask his girlfriend to marry him. And he stops in a shop to buy her a bunch of flowers. And he's getting his change back. And he looks down on the bill that he gets in his change. 
and he sees her name on the bill, and he says, that's crazy. I'm on my way to ask my girlfriend, Esther, to marry me, and here's somebody has written Esther on this dollar bill. He said, if she says yes, I'm going to give her this dollar bill. I'm going to frame it for her. So she says yes, and he frames the money, and he gives her the money, and she says, oh, where did you get this? He said, you're not going to believe this. The night that I asked you to marry me, I got this money in my change. And it had your name on it, and I thought it was a sign that, um, that, I, sh you know, that I was doing the right thing. And she said, what's unbelievable is that's my handwriting. Oh. And it was her money. And um, I just loved, loved that story, um, that, uh, that, you know, that love. That even love. So the stories, many of the stories in here are about accidents and illness, but we also have it laced with with the uh, love stories and the miracle of love. And you know that great saying that coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. And I think that these stories sound like that. Yes, that's you know, right. That yes. It's God's way of being Well, I anonymous. think for, for people of faith will come to answered prayers and they will see the hand of God all over it. But for other people, perhaps, that are not on a faith journey, they will come to these stories and they'll scratch their head and say, okay, I don't know what's going on here, <laughs> but something's Something going happened. on here. I think our time is up. Thank you. You're an angel, on camera and off. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.